If you use Discord at all, you're probably familiar with the term reaction roles. These are roles that are set up in the server that are selectable by the user so they can customize their experience inside the server. You can use these for notification roles, you can use them for color roles, really anything under the moon that you want the user to be able to customize, you can set up. For the longest time, the typical way that you would do this is you would add in a utility bot and you would set up an embed message through the bot and attached to that message would be the different reaction emojis for each role. A user simply reacts to the message with that emoji that corresponds with the role and they would get the role. But last year, Discord released a new feature called onboarding, which lets users be able to select roles when they join the server. And it's way more aesthetically pleasing and efficient than the traditional method with bots. I did a video covering this last year, but when I did that video, they didn't have the new server banner feature that's a part of this setup process. So I wanted to do an updated video going over the entire onboarding process that includes the server banner as well. So we're gonna dive into this test server I made and we're gonna go through the entire onboarding process and how to set it up. Okay, so I've got this server set up already with a bunch of channels and I already created roles that we're gonna set up for the user to be able to select. Now, to be able to set this up, you're gonna to wanna to go into your server settings and then before you are able to set this up, you wanna make sure that you have your server set up as a community server. If you don't, you should see an enable community button right here and once you do that, that will unlock all of the new community features, which onboarding is a part of. And you're also gonna to wanna to go ahead and create any roles that you want to set up as reaction roles. So I set up a couple, we're gonna go through how to set up, I set up two notification roles for YouTube and Twitch, and then I set up a few game roles that people are gonna be able to select to un if they're interested in those games, they're gonna be able to unlock those game sections. So let's dive into how to do this. We're gonna go to the onboarding tab and we're gonna click check it out. First thing that it's gonna do is it's going to let you walk through the safety setup features. So this is where if you wanna set up rule screening, you can do that right here under DM and spam protection. You can click set up and you can put in any of the rules that you want. Now, what this rule screening does is it kind of acts like the traditional verification method. If you've ever joined a server and you've had to click a, click a button or an emoji to verify yourself and then you get access to the rest of the server, that's essentially what this is, but built directly into Discord. The rule screening feature was out for a while before onboarding was out, but now they've integrated it to be a part of the onboarding experience. So after a user goes through and selects the roles that they wanna select, they're then gonna to have to verify that they've read the rules. They're not gonna be able to actually get in the server and chat or anything until they do that. So this onboarding feature also re replaces the traditional verification method that you would use with a utility bot. So I went ahead and copied and pasted just a few of the rules that I use in my own server, um, just, to, just to be able to showcase what it will look like when you actually go through the process. Um, you can stop and go ahead and copy and paste all of your rules in here. You can also come back to this section later and be able to do that later on. So we're gonna save that, we're gonna turn it on. You can preview it, this is what it's gonna look like. They'll have to check the box and submit that they've read and agreed to the rules. After we set that up, we're gonna back out and then you have the ability to set up any auto moderation features if you want. I would highly recommend setting up the block commonly flagged words. You can click uh, set up right there and then if you wanna turn on the insult and slurs, that's the best one to enable. You can turn that on. If you want the alerts to be able to be sent to a specific channel, you can do that right here. I'm gonna set that up as my moderator only channel. I know I went through that kind of quick. I have a full in-depth guide on auto moderation that I'll link in the description if you wanna go check out that and what all you can do with auto moderation. So we're gonna save those changes, we're gonna back out, and now we're gonna to go to the next step, which is default channels. This lets you set up any channels that you want the user to have access to without a specific role. So we're going to select all of the welcome category because we want the user to have access to all of these channels. And we're gonna select all of the text channels because we also want the user to have access to all of those without any roles. The three that we're not gonna check are our three game categories that I mentioned, Apex, Valorant, and CSGO. We only want the user to see these channels if they select that corresponding role. So we're gonna leave those blank and we're gonna go on to the next section. Now this is where you can set up the actual questions. So this is the reaction role part of the onboarding. So we're gonna set up two questions. One is going to be what notifications would you like to receive? And then the second is what games are you interested in? So I'm gonna go ahead and type those in and then I'll show you how to set up the answers. Okay, so I've got both the questions typed out. Um, now we're able to add answers to them. So for would you like to receive any notifications? I already set up the two roles. So the first one is going to be a YouTube notifications. 
and then we're gonna type that in. If you wanna type in a further description, you can say this is for YouTube noties. And then you can either assign specific channels to them or you can give them a specific role. What we're gonna be doing is giving them a specific role. So we're gonna give them the YouTube pings role. And you can also, the third option, add an emoji. If you wanna give it a little more flair, we can do the red circle for YouTube. And then we're gonna do the same exact thing for for the other role. We're gonna do Twitch notifications. And then we'll type, this is for Twitch noties. And then um, we're going to select the role that we want to give the user again. It's gonna be the Twitch pings role. And then we will use the purple circle for that. Go ahead and save your changes to that question. And that is really all there is to setting that part up. You also have another option down here. Say if you're setting up something like a region role, if you want if you want them to be able to select where they're from, like North America, South America, so on and so forth, you might wanna turn off allow multiple answers because obviously someone can't be from North America and Europe at the same time. So you can turn off allow multiple answers for me. I'm going to make it where they can select multiple if they want or they don't have to. You also have the option to make it a required question that they have to select something for or something they can just skip over and they don't have to select. So now I'm going to do the same exact thing for question two really quick. You guys get the process, so I'm gonna cut through this part. Go ahead and set that up and then we're gonna go on to the next part, which is the server guide. Something to note too, if you have any custom emojis added into your server, you can actually use custom emojis for these um, selectable roles. This is a test server that I just set up, so I don't have any emojis set up inside the server. But I just wanted to go ahead and mention if you do, you'll see an extra tab here. That'll be your server with your server's emojis that you can select. Okay, so we've got both of our questions set up. Um, you can add up to four questions that users can answer right here before they join. And then anything after that has to be set up as a post join question. And I'll show you guys what that looks like in a little bit. So let's go ahead and go on to the next step. And this is going to be the server guide. So it's a little bit more of a custom experience to welcome a user in once they actually get inside your server. So we're gonna start at the top. There's three different steps to this part. You have a welcome sign, a new members to-do list, and then also resource pages. So we're gonna start at the top with, this, with the welcome sign. We're gonna set that up. What this is, is it's basically going to be a message just like this that kind of greets them into the server. So we're going to set up the welcome message. We're gonna choose the message author. I'm going to set it to be from me. And then we're just gonna type in a little message to greet the user into the server. Notice how it says you can do the brackets and the at username. That will actually mention the user so they see their own name in the message and not just a generic message or name. So mine's gonna be pretty simple. You can type as much as you want. I think up to 300 characters here. I'm just gonna do, hey, username, welcome to the server. We're gonna click save and it will show you this is what it will look like to a user. It'll say, hey, it'll ping them and it'll say, welcome to the server. Now we have a new member to-do list. So these are three to five different tasks that you can set up for you users to be able to do to kind of help point them in the right direction when they join your server. So the first thing we're gonna set up is I set up an introductions channel and I'm gonna direct people to that. One of the, my to-do tasks is gonna be to direct people there so they can introduce themselves. So I'm gonna select the introductions channel and I'm gonna say, what, what should the member do? We're gonna say, introduce yourself to the community. So it's going to be, it's gonna be introduce yourself to the community inside the introductions channel. We can upload a custom thumbnail or we can just choose an emoji. I'm just gonna choose an emoji. We're gonna use the wave emoji. And the last part is going to ask you, when do you want the task to be completed? Do you want the member to simply visit the channel and then it checks off the task for them? or do you want them to have to actually send a message to the, to the channel? Since this is an introduction channel, I want the user to actually go in the channel and send a message and introduce themselves. So I'm gonna, talk, I'm gonna check on the setting to where the member has to send a message in the channel. We're gonna click save and then we've got it. This is what it'll look like. And now we're gonna set up two more of these. Okay, so I went ahead and set up two more. So now we have three to do tasks. The first one is to introduce yourself. That's one where they have to actually go and send a message. The second one is going to be just to check out my content schedule. Inside the schedule channel, we put a calendar emoji on there. And this one is set up to where the member just has to visit the channel. And then thirdly, we have check out upcoming events inside the event channel. They just have to visit the channel as well and then they'll complete it. So you can set up to five of those if you want. You have to have at least three and you can do a maximum of five. Next up, we have resource pages. The only channels you can set up for this are read only channels. So they have to be channels that a user cannot message in. So say if you're something like a stock trader and you just kind of want to have a bunch of, um, 
different informational guides or something inside a channel, then you can set the, these up as resources pages and on your server guide, on your server banner up here, it'll actually show them all of the resource pages and they can click it. And when they click it as a resource page, it, take, it starts them all the way at the top instead of them starting at the bottom and having to scroll up. So you can quickly add a few, but if you wanna customize it more, then you wanna click add a resource down here. And this is where you can really customize them to kind of look how they look up here. If you simply just click add, it's just gonna look like that and that's it. But if you go in to actually customize it, you can give it a nice picture, you can give it a title with a description, and you can really set it up to look nice and professional. And if you if you use the quick add option, you can still go in and edit them. So we'll set up the welcome channel and we're gonna give this resource a name and we're gonna say welcome to the server. Obviously, if you were actually setting this up for your own server, you would wanna set up some channels that are actually more informational driven besides just a welcome channel. But I just wanna showcase how to set this up for you guys. So once you actually type it in, and give it a description it'll look a little bit cleaner you can also upload a custom icon to it to like i said give it a really nice look and feel up here so for this again you have to have at least three resource pages and they can only be read only channels so you're gonna have to make sure you have at least three only three read only channels set up in the server to be able to utilize this at the very bottom, you can set up a server guide banner if you are a level two boosted server. Basically at the top right here, it just displays your server banner to give it even more of a nice aesthetic when a user's looking at it. So I to jump in here like this. I was editing this video and I figured I should add this in here. If you get, this seems to be a weird bug with Discord onboarding right now. If you get this weird pop-up that I'm showing you right now on the screen, um, all you have to do is go back out to your server banner where you're setting up the server guide section, go back in and you go back to the review screen and you should no longer get that error pop up and you should be able to set everything up just fine. I don't know why this pops up. Even if you set everything up to the T, sometimes you'll still get this pop up. It seems like it's just a bug. So if you get it, just go back to your server guide, go back into your on the review screen and you should be good. And once you set all of this up, you are finally done setting up all of your onboarding settings. And now you go on to the last step, which is review. So we're going to click next and we're now able to review everything that we set up. If there's anything wrong, if, if there's anything wrong, like certain channels are accessible through onboarding, which is your questions and default channels, it'll give you a warning and you'll have to go back and edit those. But what we're going to do now is we're going to preview this to see what it looks like. So we're going to click preview and it's going to let us go through the actual onboarding process. So when a user joins, this is what will happen. They'll get this pop up and they'll, they'll have to answer the question. So do you want to receive any notifications? I do want to receive YouTube and Twitch. It'll tell them at the bottom, they're going to receive the YouTube pings and the Twitch pings roles. They'll click next. They have another question. Let them select what games they're interested in. Say they select one and two and then click next. And last, the last step is going to be to read and agree to the server rules. So this is where that verification rule screening process comes into play. Click finish and then they will be into your server and they'll be greeted with your server guide slash server banner. So if you liked how that process went, you go back to your onboarding settings and then you enable the onboarding. If there's anything you want to change up, you simply just go back and you can go back to, you can edit your default channels. You can come back, you can edit any of your questions, say down the road, you want to add in another question. You can come in and add a third or a fourth question if you want, or you can edit your server guide. If you don't really like the server guide, I personally don't use it in my own server. You can completely turn it off if you want, and you can still have the actual de um, selectable role as part of the onboarding process. So it's cool that they give you the option. If you don't prefer the server guide, you can completely turn it off. That's pretty much the process of setting up onboarding. I prefer this way more than the traditional reaction roles with utility bots. It's just such more aesthetically pleasing and such more of an efficient experience for the user. It makes sure that every user when they first join gets the option to select the roles they want and customize the experience the way they want it to be rather than having to cut, join your server and then find a roles channel that they go to and then select the roles through that channel. Now in the future, if a user ever wants to change their roles, there's a channels and roles button that'll pop up at the top. They click that and it'll give them the exact channel, the exact questions that they had when they join. They come in here, they can toggle on or toggle off any of the roles that they want or no longer want. 
And that's pretty much all I got. So hopefully this video, hopefully I didn't go too fast for you guys. I feel like I went through this a little bit fast, but I didn't want the video to drag on too long, even though I feel like it already did. So hopefully you guys got some value from this. In a couple weeks, I will have my full 2024 Discord setup guide out. I wanted to go ahead and get this out because it's a lengthy process to set up and I don't want that server setup video to end up being an hour long because if I included this in there, it would be an entire hour long. So I wanted to go ahead and get this out. And then once I do that video, I can refer people back to this video. So I hope you guys enjoyed. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video. Peace.